Hey guys, this is going to be a long video because it's about the various species of voles and lemmings of North America. Voles and lemmings are small mouse-like rodents that have a stout body with small eyes and ears. Lemmings are very similar to voles, but the main difference is probably a smaller tail and a more northerly distribution, but we'll be going over the species to species difference throughout the video, so you'll understand all that by the end. There is some difficulty distinguishing some of the species here, so I will be providing some notes on the screen, and there will be a lot of differences between the species that can actually be determined by a proportionate length of the tail. So I'll be very specific regarding that. And there is currently some taxonomic revision going on, specifically relating to the meadow vole, which has been split into three different species, and that's what we'll be looking at first. So the eastern meadow vole is probably the most common species of vole within its range. It lives in fields mostly, meadows, if you will. It is dark brown with a tail equal to about a third of the length of its body. And I would like to stress that in this case, I'm specifically referring to the body length as the length from the body to the base of the tail, not including the tail, as I will be using this term many times throughout this video. The map I have on this slide will cover both the eastern and western metal voles put together, as there is ongoing debate as to whether they are two species or one. The boundary between the two species is around the area just to the west of Lake Superior, so it would exist from the states of Minnesota, Iowa, and Missouri, as well as the province of Ontario, eastward to the east coast within, within the shaded area. And the western metaphor would exist to the west of those states and Ontario within the shaded area. As you can see, the western metaphor looks basically identical to the eastern metaphor, and the main difference is in their range. At least that's how we see it at the moment. We may learn new things in the future as we study them. The Florida salt marsh vole is formerly known to be a subspecies of the meadow vole, but is now considered to be a full species. It is found only in the coastal marshes of northwestern peninsular Florida. The beach vole is found only on Muscogee Island, which is a small island in Massachusetts, just to the west of Nantucket Island. It is the only species of vole on the island, so no difficulty there identifying it. The woodland vole is found all over the eastern United States and as far west as Texas and Kansas. It can be identified by its velvety reddish-brown fur, its very short tail, and its very small eyes, which are due to its mostly subterranean existence. The prairie vole is found in the central U.S. in the Midwest and the Great Plains, as well as some of the Canadian prairies. It is similar to the meadow vole, but with a pale buff-colored belly instead of gray, as well as a shorter tail, which is only about a quarter of its body length. Its feet are also lighter colored than the meadow vole, and it has five pads on the soles of its feet, whereas the meadow vole has six pads. And lastly, the female prairie vole has six mammae, whereas the female meadow vole has eight mammae. The rock vole is found in the Appalachian region of the United States, particularly in the northern region, as well as most of eastern Canada. It is fairly rare, but it can be identified by its orange nose and relatively long tail. It also appears more mouse-like than other voles. This is a newly split species, often lumped in with the Mexican vole, which is of course found to the south in Mexico and will not be discussed here. The Mogollon vole is found mostly in mountainous areas of Arizona and New Mexico and adjacent states. It has a buff or cream-colored belly, which sets it apart from most other vole species, and it's got a short tail, which is only about a quarter of its body length. And this is also distinctive, as other voles in the region will have longer tails. The Montane vole is found in mountainous regions of the western United States and British Columbia. Its back can be dark brown, gray brown, or dark gray. Its belly and feet are silvery in color, and its tail is moderately long, about a third of its body length. The water vole is found in mountainous areas of the northwestern United States and southwestern Canada. It is one of the larger voles, probably about twice the size of other voles in the region, and it is often found near water, specifically mountain streams. It also has a fairly long tail. The gray-tailed vole is found in Willamette Valley in Oregon. It can be identified mostly by its tail, which is about half its body length, its lighter brown coloration, 
and its silvery belly and bottom of the tail. The long-tailed vole has a tail about three-quarters of the length of its body, which is significantly longer than any other voles in its range and is a fairly good identifying feature. It is found all over the western United States and western Canada, as well as eastern Alaska. The Townsend's vole is found in the Pacific Northwest from Vancouver Island to Northern California. It is a fairly dark colored vole, which is an important identifying feature. It also has a silvery belly, and its tail is about a third of its body length. The California vole is found mostly in California, as you might expect, but it's also found in some parts of Oregon and northwestern Mexico. Its tail is a little less than half its length, and it's brown in coloration. The creeping vole is found in the Pacific Northwest, where it's found from the Vancouver area of southwestern BC all the way to northern California. It's the smallest vole in North America, and it has tiny eyes, which are as a result of it spending a lot of time underground, like the woodland vole of eastern North America. Its tail is about a third of its body length, and it has five pads on its hind feet, instead of the six pads that other voles within its range. The tundra vole is found all over Siberia and northern Scandinavia, but in North America it's only found in Alaska and northwestern Canada. It's very similar to the meadow vole, with similar body proportions, except it has a bicolored tail with a little tuft at its tip. The meadow vole is also darker brown in coloration, which is also helpful for identification purposes. The taiga vole, also known as the yellow-cheeked vole, is found in northern Canada and Alaska, mostly in the northern parts of the boreal forest. It can be identified by its bright orange nose, which you can see here. It is also one of the larger voles in North America, with it being almost as big as the water vole we discussed earlier. The insular vole is found only on St. Matthew and Hall Islands in the Bering Sea to the west of Alaska. They are the only species of vole on those islands, and they have bright orange sides. The singing vole is very similar to the insular vole, and it's likely that they are closely related phylogenetically. It is only found in Alaska and Yukon. It has an orange line on its sides, like the insular vole, and its tail is only a quarter of its body length. Both of these are very useful identifiers for this species. The northern red-backed vole has a red back, as you might be able to tell, and is generally brightly colored. It also has fairly large ears and a hairy tail, which is red on top and white on the bottom. It is found all over Russia and northern Eurasia in the Old World, but it's also found in northern Canada and Alaska in North America. The southern red-backed vole also has a red back, just like the northern red-backed vole, with the same large ears and only lacking the hairiness of the tail that the northern red-backed vole has. There's a catch, though, as there is a rare form with a gray back, in which case it can be identified by the contrast between its dark gray back and its lighter gray sides, as well as its other traits. It's found in the southern half of Canada and the northern parts of the United States, particularly in the Appalachians and the Rockies. The western red-backed vole is a little harder to identify, and it can be found in western Oregon and northwestern California. It's dark gray with a red-brown stripe going down the middle of its back. Its tail is just less than half of its body length, and it has small eyes. The western heather vole is found in the Rocky Mountains from southeastern Alaska to northern New Mexico. It's only found at very high elevations throughout its range, which is a good indicator. Another good indicator is its tail, which is only about a quarter to a third of its body length. It also has fairly long whiskers, which most voles don't have. The eastern heather vole is apparently a very rare species, as you may be able to tell, because this is the only photo I've got of it. Don't worry, the vole is still alive, just terrified, and was probably released back into the wild right after this picture was taken. These guys are found all across Canada, with very little of its range in the United States. It is easily identifiable by its orange nose and light brown back, and it has a short tail, which is only about a quarter of its body length. And just like the western heather vole, the eastern heather vole has fairly long whiskers. The red tree vole is found in western Oregon and northwestern California. It's arboreal, meaning it will mostly be found in trees, if you're able to get a look at it. It is reddish-brown all over, which is a pretty good indicator, and it also has a tail about three-quarters of the length of its body, which is pretty long for a vole. 
and which it uses for its arboreal lifestyle. The Sonoma tree vole is found in northwestern California, and it's very similar to the red tree vole, but it's much more brightly colored. The white-footed vole is closely related to the two tree voles we just went over, and it's also found in western Oregon and northwestern California. It also has a fairly long tail of almost three quarters of its body length, but it's not as brightly colored, and it's usually just reddish brown. Additionally, its tail is bicolor, with brown above and white below. The sagebrush vole is found in the mountainous regions of the western United States and into some of the Great Plains and the prairies of Canada. It's pale gray in color and has, has a very short tail of about a quarter the length of its body. Now we're moving on to the lemmings, with the southern bog lemming, which is the southernmost species of lemming in North America. It's found in the eastern half of the United States and southeastern Canada. Its tail is even shorter than any of the vole species, with it being only a fifth the length of its body. It also has a relatively big head. The northern bog lemming looks almost identical to the southern bog lemming, except it's found all over the boreal forests of Canada, as well as in Alaska and the northern reaches of the Rockies and the Appalachians. It generally is darker colored than the southern bog lemming, but that is difficult to distinguish, and if you really want to distinguish the two, which you may have to do in the northern Appalachian region, you would need to look at its upper incisors, which are narrower in the bo northern bog lemming compared to the southern bog lemming. Additionally, the southern bog lemming female has six mammae, and the northern bog lemming female has eight mammae. The northern colored lemming is found along the shore of the Arctic Ocean in northern Canada, Alaska, and Greenland. All five species of colored lemmings, which we'll be going over here, are fairly stocky, with a very short tail, only about a tenth the size of its body, which would mean, in other words, that it would be barely visible. All colored lemmings also go completely white in the winter, and at that time, they would be essentially indistinguishable. But they all pretty much have different ranges, with very few overlaps, so they're not too much difficulty there. But in the summer, they have somewhat different color patterns, in which they all have some level of brown with white patches all over, as you can see in the picture in the center. The picture on the right is of a lemming in its winter form, pure white with dark roots, and the northern colored lemming in particular has more white on its head and back. The ungava colored lemming is found in northern Quebec and northern Labrador, where it does not overlap in range with any other species of colored lemming. So this is a pretty easy one, isn't it? The Richardson's colored lemming is found in the area just to the west of Hudson Bay, where it also doesn't overlap with any other colored lemmings, except for maybe the northern colored lemming in the northern part of its range, but it has some brighter fur on its chest and sides to differentiate it, in case you're interested. The Ogilvy Mountains colored lemming is found in north central Yukon, and it has no known pictures. So here's another one of a previous species, so you know it looks pretty much the same as the others. It doesn't really overlap with the other species anyway. And lastly is the Nelson's colored lemming, which also has no known pictures of it. It's found only in western Alaska, where no other species of colored lemming exists, as is the case for the previous species. There is also a sixth species of colored lemming that I completely forgot about, called the Unalaska colored lemming. And it's only found on the island of Unalaska, in the Aleutian Islands, where it is the only species, and there are no known pictures of it. The last species we'll be going over today is the North American brown lemming and it's found all over northern Canada and Alaska and also into the easternmost part of Siberia. It is light brown in color with a brighter patch near the mid-back, and as with all other lemmings, it has a very small tail. That's all for the voles and the lemmings. And here's the list of species groups I'm going to be covering in future videos, so if you're interested in seeing those or in viewing some of my past videos, you should subscribe. And if you liked the video, you should give it a like. That's all for today. Thanks.